What's up, everybody? We back with another message, another video. Thank you to all my new subscribers and future new subscribers. You know we do nothing here without God because everything is spiritually led by God over here. We cover the world from a spiritual and physical aspect to get the raw, real, and uncut answers. So anything you hear, anything you see in these end times, may you test the spirits, a.k.a. take the words and visuals back to prayer with God, as there are many Decepticons running around in these end times sent from the enemy, had a strong, close, and personal relationship with God. Good, great, and awesome. All right, everybody, May 2nd, 2024, on a good old Thursday, let's talk about a topic called correction. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Now, a lot of people, they have a very big issue when it comes to correction videos. Now, what you cannot do is place everybody in the same category and label it as an attack or, you know, confuse correction with an attack. There are some people who are sent by the Lord to do certain things and there's others who wasn't and they just saw it and they're doing it and they don't really know what protocols to follow to properly do it. OK, so it's a big difference. That's why you got to seek the Lord and not get yourself in trouble. So let's talk about it. When it comes to the topic of correction, many tend not to ask the Lord where people are in the process of Matthew 18. I've seen a lot of comments with people going, did you talk to this person? Matthew 18, and they just didn't ask God the backstory. They didn't ask God where that person stood, if that had already been done with different individuals. And now the Lord is just now speaking out because of rebellion. And he's just warning people because that individual is on a public platform. He's going to look after his children, ladies and gentlemen. That's just how that works. But yeah, a lot of people don't ask the Lord. And, you know, I always tell people, for me, a lot of the pieces of correction I've had to give, I don't know these individuals. I haven't talked or spoken to a lot of these individuals at all. But that's because at this point, you got the Lovies, you got the, I had to do Sister Carrie Ann, I had to do the Celestials, I had to do all these individuals, right? That the Lord told me to speak on. And people got in their feelings. But they all have been told and know what the Lord has been saying. They heard it before. And they've all, in other words, responded in their own way to it. This has been going on for years. So the thing is, the Lord is not going to use Matthew 18 on somebody consistently with different people if he's already done it with the set already and they aren't trying to be corrected. It's over. Matthew 18 was used already by multiple people. And now the Lord is like done with it and he's commanding people to be warned not to fall into a trap of certain people. Some people are hearing from things they shouldn't be hearing from and they don't even know it. Some people are doing things on purpose. Matthew 18 for most of these individuals are over with. And a lot of times when people get on these platforms, they even say stuff like that as if they're going to receive the correction in private or even respond. That's the craziest part to me. The way that they respond on the public platforms, they're going to respond the same way in private. They wasn't going to receive it. So it's at this point, it's more for the following to warn them so that they don't get hurt. More so than they already did if they have already been hurt. You know, the Lord does follow Matthew 18 too. He will come to you privately. He will give you dreams. People may not understand that. So he'll bring somebody to you privately. If you don't listen to them, they'll bring more. You still don't listen. You know, then it comes out to the open. The Lord himself can do that. You know, I don't have to know somebody for him to tell me to do something especially if it's publicly, if you're representing yourself in a way that the Lord has not appointed you to be and it's misleading people, anything. People are getting hurt, ladies and gentlemen. So you got to think, use your head. Well, maybe this person already has been told so many times. I got to see if I'm not disrespecting the Lord just by watching or following. I don't want to disrespect the Lord. I don't know how people comment without hearing from the Lord and getting that confirmation. That's bold. But you know, people got to learn that this is correction season. What do you think? Everybody that says Jesus and God doing what they're supposed to be doing. Do you not read the word? It's the craziest thing to me. 
seeking the Lord. That's why I always tell people to seek the Lord. Don't get yourselves in trouble. Stay out the way. This ain't the, you know, you want to stay out of his way. That's what I tell everybody. Stay out the Lord's way. If he tell you to separate, then you better. You're going to be in trouble if you don't. So. When it comes to Paul. And Peter, y'all got to understand what Paul and Peter. Paul didn't attack Peter when he rebuked him openly. Paul corrected Peter in front of the people he was misleading with him, and they all got corrected for the sake of the truth to do damage control, you know, to correct that hypocrisy and so forth. Everybody got corrected. So, you know, I didn't have people tell me to, or have you emailed that person? Yeah, I'm going to email somebody in witchcraft that know what they're doing and waste my time and then have them try to use manipulation on me. <laughs> Saying, you know, no, I don't got time for that. The Lord ain't going to put me in that. It's a waste of time and it doesn't correct the people watching them either. Because they're not going to correct it. You got to use your head. A lot of people read scripture that fits their emotional feelings and standpoint, but they don't think. They don't think if you pay attention to somebody long enough, you can see what's wrong. If you listen, but people don't listen only to what they want to, what they're comfortable listening to. And people could be in agreement with it, too. That's why or they idolatry is a common theme. Oh, I don't want to let go of this person. That ain't good. Anybody can be in error, ladies and gentlemen. We got to make sure we. Seeing this stuff because it's too much going on with that error. Yeah, there are people that make videos with the wrong heart posture, you know, and for me personally, I just do what the Lord tell me to do. It's going to be his words that he want to speak through me. I don't if they stern, I got to do what I'm told and keep the tone the way it is. He will lead me to the videos and give me the scripture that helps correct the error. And that's the procedure I follow. I don't go at nobody personally. It is what it is. And then you see people rejecting the truth, which it gets kind of dumb and crazy because what, what, <laughs> you know, third eyes, three toes, like, huh, y'all tripping. Y'all need to get it together. Matthew 18, 15 to 20. Moreover, this is everybody's favorite scripture. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more. That by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. I actually want to mention something that the Lord just put on to me just now. What happens when those two or three witnesses are scared to say something and they get stopped in their tracks? Because this, I've actually seen this happen before with a situation where people didn't want to do it. So who is the Lord going to use to do it? Somebody that's not scared to. It got to be brought to the church. And I ain't scared to do it. Some people get scared. So again, I don't have to know somebody to, for the Lord to lay it on me and give me the assignment. Hey, I need you to carry this on. Because this has been going on for way too long. Yes, sir. Let's do it. I'm not about to get in trouble over people's emotions. 1 Timothy 5.20, those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may fear. So when it comes to elders, people that are legitimately elders in the church, they can also sin. And the Lord's just letting you know, nobody's above correction. There's a respectful way to do it. Okay, you don't want to be disrespecting somebody. Tell everybody what the Lord had given. You don't want to water down it but you do want to be respectful at the same time and that's why you got to be trained and follow procedure galatians 2 11, 14 this is the paul and peter one i withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed for before certain men came from james he would eat with the gentiles but when they came he withdrew and separated himself fearing those who were of the circumcision and the rest of the jews also played the hypocrite with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, 
if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? Paul wasn't playing with him. Said it in front of all of them. And now that leads to the question, what is considered open? So, you know, back then, a lot of people try to use this. Oh, they you don't do that on YouTube. Well, what is open? Back in the day, they didn't have YouTube. So wherever open deception was done, that's where open correction is given. So guess what? If your favorite people up on here tripping on YouTube and they ain't corrected, they're going to get corrected for tripping on YouTube. Now, if it's only, you know, to a group standard or a church standard, that's where the open correction will be. What do you consider open where the deception is openly done? I don't need to get on YouTube for somebody that didn't did something in a church. Some other people don't know about it. It only need to be fixed in that church setting. So, you know, people do too much. No, the Lord is not looking at these people who even appointed themselves to be leaders the same as they look at somebody following. That's what you got to understand. It's harsh judgment that comes to these people. They're responsible for souls. Leadership, you don't get looked at the same way. The Lord don't play. Ladies and gentlemen, he doesn't play. If I sat up here and did some crazy stuff that I know I wasn't supposed to do, you don't think he would tell me, you know better. Why would you even do that? And if I refuse to correct that, oh, you better believe something coming that is not good. So stop acting like this leadership stuff, some of these mistakes, some of these things being made is just so okay. Because the Lord will train you to be who you are called to be. But people trying to call themselves to be things or they just don't want to listen because they've been rebellious. Rebellious children of the Lord. Some of them. The Lord is not looking at it the way you're looking at it. He's not playing games. So stop treating this like this is something so little and so, oh, no, no. Leadership is leadership. But a lot of people aren't in it, so they don't understand what it's like to be responsible for souls. You don't know what it's like to have people coming to you for help from all over the world. People are hurting. People are deceived. People need help. And when you start hurting people more, taking advantage of people, that don't go over or fly over well with the Lord. This is not a game. But see, people don't see it that way. They don't understand. They think everybody that say Jesus and God, oh, yeah, I know this person. I've had to give correction to my parents. So let me tell you something. Everybody is getting something if the Lord says, get it. Because that's the boss, not your pastor, not your preacher. And that's just what it's going to be. So if your feelings get hurt, oh, well, go to the boss the Lord. 1-800-CALL-GOD. Put your hands together and pray, and he'll let you know what's up. Peace and blessings, and I will catch y'all in the next one.